Okay, so in this match I'm playing uh, a guy called Beareth, um, and it's part of a, a five-match series, uh, not against this guy only, but this, this is actually part of a three-match series against the same guy, and I decided to post it here on Duel's community because I thought it was a pretty decent match, it was a great showcase of the deck. Um, and I start off with a great hand, by the way. I have the Hedron Crab, which is pretty much the running start that you want if you can't draw the, the Chancellor of the Spires. Um, I have the Howling Mine, I have the Dreamborn Muse, and I... Uh, did I draw the Mind Control? Doesn't matter. I think I, I started off with the Tome Scour. Um, so that will... S just right away will mill him and you, you, start, uh, you start seeing how this deck will start coming into yeah how how the deck will start getting uh, getting on its feet ri really really fast uh, especially when you have howling mine down and head run crap because that almost guarantees you uh, an island every turn at least every second turn um and i have the i have the th uh, tome scour i have the dreamborn muse that's really good really good for me uh, he decides not to attack because he will only do one damage and i can block that so I draw the in into the royal, which is good. Uh, decide to tome scour, and I don't have any other things to drop, but I want to hold back on the into the royal. Don't feel like uh, targeting his creature because he's still not in the range. Of, well, he can probably start doing some damage now that he has uh, the planes. Um, you, you see, the first two turns he uh, didn't do much other than oh, here we go. Here's the doom blade. But I didn't want to deal with that. I, I wanted to get my uh, Hedron Crab back because it gives me quite an advantage. So now he can get in for... Okay, he starts... He he drops that and uh, he can get in... He could get in for one with his uh, R Skellingtons there. Um, that's not an R Skellington. Okay. So I draw the I draw the island and I draw the either adept that will either 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 it's either I think I don't know either I don't know um so I decide to get down uh, get the dreamborn muse down on the table ca and um, right away it starts going to work for me seven cards milled and. I feel that I'm in a pretty good position here. I can take whatever he has if he ha drops something incredible, for example, like the Sublime Archangel or something, but I'm not seeing a lot of things that I want to steal of his, uh, and he can't do much damage. Uh, here this turn he's doing three points of damage, and I'm not that impressed with it, so I just let it, I just let it slide. Um, I want to get my Hedron Crab down again, uh, the rest of it is just for control, but not uh, not something that I'm I'm in I'm in need of right now. But then I draw the traumatize, and immediately I know what to do. Uh, I'm I'm cursing at myself for 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 uh, for getting the land on the table too quickly before I consider whether I want to cast the headrun crap or not and. I think I th this is the second time that I I'm cursing away at myself for for playing the land too quickly, which I should be. I should really like Pavlov stalk. I should um, I I should really get uh, into the uh, I I should condition myself uh, to to remember that you don't drop those lands too early, especially not when you're playing with Hedron crabs. So, but I traumatized him, and and you see with the Dreamborn Muse, he's na now down to eight. La uh, eight uh, cards in this uh, library. I'm at 40, and I will be at 35 minus one from the uh, card that I draw next turn, so that's 34. But he has five cards in hand. He's tapped out already. That means that he's he's all the way down to three, 
plus if I drop the Hedron Crab and then the island, and I have plenty of islands to, to work with here, he's down to... He's down to zero. Th he's down to five now. And he sees it, yeah. He gives me the old GG. And, uh, and that's good, because uh, that's game one. But yeah, you, you see, the Hedron Crab will work for you. Uh, even, like, it, it will make it so that drawing islands is not a problem. So he... he Doom blades my dreamborn muse, but it's too late. Uh, she, her effect already went off, and uh, it's uh, GG. So, game two, and uh, my opponent switched it up a little bit. I drew this hand, which I thought was pretty amazing. It's still, I, I, I still start off with the Hedron Crab. I have the Jace's Phantasm, the Howling Mine, and the Jace's Erasure. Which is a pretty good start because it will um, the, the Jason's Erasure and the he Hedron Crab will keep me going with the mill effects. Um, the Howling Mind will make it uh, so that that it it runs a little faster. But you see, he changed it up to Goblin Gangland, which could be a problem. But I'm not too worried at this pro uh, this this point because I had been winning all the matches so far and I was looking for that match to showcase the the weakness of the deck and Goblin is certainly a viable opponent or um, it, it, it is usually the deck that will take out the the slower control decks because it has a barrage of of, of uh, Goblins that it can throw at you for very very like a very low mana cost um, in some way I would say it's overpowered but it's it, in other ways, it's just it can be. It, it's just amazingly built from the get-go. It's very difficult to lose with goblins, unless you're an awful player, uh, and that's why you see a lot of people running it in tournaments and so on. But let's see. Um, yep, the goblin chieftain. As soon as he dropped that card, I knew that I was in a clock, and I might be taking a. a Taking the D, as they say, uh, in uh, in a round or two, uh, because now he can drop any creature, uh, and it has haste, and I have far too many lands. Uh, Howling Mine is not very helpful, and I decide not to drop the Jace's Phantom, because I'm thinking either I'm just going to lose, or it's going to be a chump blocker, and... I want it to be a 5-5 when it, it drops. And it, it might have been a mistake, but you see, it's it, if I dropped it as a 1-1, one, one, it, it, it wasn't going to do much different. So I go ahead and tell him GG because, yeah, he had a perfect beginning, a perfect start. And next round, he's just going <laughs> to he's just gonna completely destroy me because I'm down to two. I have nothing going for me. He has, he has 50 cards in his library. I have less cards in my library than he does. So I dropped the Dream Born Muse, but at this point, he only has uh, two cards in hand, and uh, there's really nothing much to do. I don't think he even has uh, 10 cards in his library. So... Yeah, um, my deck was a bit too slow uh, for goblins, but against I think almost any other deck, maybe, maybe even peacekeepers, I would have been able to uh, get in there with the or, or drop that uh, traumatize on him, and then get the Jace's phantasm down, or the other way around, and then start controlling a little bit more. Um, but goblins is too fast, very very fast deck. So I decide to go in for another match, but I'm hoping that he doesn't play Goblin Ganglands. Um, I'm, um, although I'm half expecting it. Um, how do you ex half expect something? Yeah, never mind. Uh, decide to keep. I think I decide to keep this hand, which is probably not a good idea because I didn't have a lot of uh, lands in hand. And as you'll see, it, pr it it wasn't a good idea, but I still make it out pretty decently. So um, let's see. By the way, I, I like to I like to show videos where I don't win all the matches because it it, it shows the the weaknesses of my deck. It might sound like a bad excuse, but I do get enough wins to to just run only 
uh, only win, uh, win videos. See, um, I was thinking at that point that he might drop a mana leak on me or some kind of counter spell in, 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 in to that effect. I think uh, Dream Puppets is the only deck that runs counter spell, but then you have the cancel and you have the ma mana leak in uh, crosswinds. Um, but now I'm aware that he might be able to counter some of the, the spells that I have. So I'm thinking, I don't want him to counter the Jace's Phantasm. He can't right now. But first of all, before we start get going, I want to, I want to start milling him for a lot so the Jace's Phantasm can be uh, get more presence on the board. But I have the Archive Trap. I have the Sword of Body and Mind, which I think Sword of Body and Mind is going to help me tremendously against the Crosswinds. Um, but I kind of get the feeling that he might um, that he might mana leak or or something to that effect uh, because he didn't he didn't uh, cast a spell this turn. He's playing patiently, and he's not making those land drops. Uh, so he's kind of in the same situation as me. But I decide to use the sort of body and mind, kind of. Uh, 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 yeah, like I wrote, I thought so. I I wanted to to draw that mana leak out, and you can say, you you can make the case that uh, that it's an expensive lure uh, lure in in a sense to lure out the the mana leak. But at the same time, I felt I do have enough um, uh, spells in my hand, creatures and so on, to to make a significant impact on his library. So uh, for the mill effects and so on. And he's still not making the mana drops. That's about to change, though. Um, but I draw the Howling Mine. And I decide to uh, lay the Jace's Phantasm. Because I'm thinking, he might, he's probably, he, he doesn't have, he, he can't afford to cancel. And he probably doesn't have any more mana leaks. I can't remember if it's two or three mana leaks in the deck altogether. Um, but I decide not to, and he... Repulses, because he's repulsive. Uh, my Jace's phantasm, but I decide not to lay down the fa uh, howling mind because I don't want to help him. So here I see now we have an equal amount of lands, but I still don't want to lay down the howling mind because he, if, if I help him get to four lands, then he can start rolling in with those uh, Jace's or sorry, Talrans invoca invocations. And I want him to hold off for a bit, but he does make that uh, fourth land drop. Which make it, uh, it so makes it so that he actually has the possibility of dropping those Talrans invocations, and now I'm behind on lands. So, and he of course bounces my uh, Jace's Phantasm, uh, t Phantasm back to my hand. But now the game has changed a little bit. I want to get the Jace's Phantasm down. I don't mind him loose, uh, wasting all his spells because my game is not about killing him. It's about taking away all of his. Um, uh, all of the cards in his library so it's no problem for me but I want that howling mine down so I can start drawing lands because now he got the four lands and and well five lands is actually pretty much what you want to be capped out on if you have to have a cap you five lands will make you for example be able to uh, to use the panoptic mirror and so on but here's the thing I have the I have the Into the Royal, and my plan at this point is uh, to start smashing in and then uh, saving the Into the Royal until he puts something uh, deviously, disastrously beautiful under that panoptic mirror. Something like a Time Warp or something. Um, yeah, I want him to lose that spell quickly. Okay, so he decides to disperse my Jace's Phantasm. And um, yeah, that's that's not going to be a problem because it's it's just a one drop for me. It's it's no skin on my nose, as they say. Um, but he decides to put a... Um, I think it's a... I forgot what it's called. Uh, you all know what it is. It's the the... the the card that copies uh, f 
another creature, or if you if you kick it, it copies. Uh, it makes five copies. I decide that no, thank you. I don't want him copying uh, neither one or five of any of my creatures uh, or his own, for that matter. Uh, eventually, my Jace's Phantasm is going to be a a, a pretty decent um, choice for him to to copy um, if he. Um, it, when I get down, or, or when I get up to ten cards in my uh, graveyard as well. So yeah, okay. So I have the Jace's Phantasm, I have the Dreamborn Muse, and he's down to seventeen cards. I have the Archive Trap, which uh, helped me out in uh, in the, one of the previous matches. Um, and I'm thinking this is my strategy. I have my five cards right now. He's casting Call to Mind, and I'm just wondering if he's going to drop something significant now uh, one of the things that I'm cons yeah Talrin's invocation one of the things that I uh, consider was if you wanted to copy my Jace's Phantasm that's why I checked out my graveyard to see if I had 10 cards in it I think I'm up to 7 or 10 I, I think I'm up to 10 now so now I start counting and I see my Dreamborn Muse will take seven of the... Uh, he has seven cards in hand, so that means that he has to discard seven. He knows he's on a clock. He just doesn't know how imminent the danger is. And I'm starting to put two and two together, so I decide to... I have eight, eight cards in hand, so I decide to go into my end phase and drop the Archive Trap, which means that he's down to four cards in hand, and that means he loses. So yeah, that's that. Uh, showcasing a what I would call an aggressive version of the mill deck. And uh, all in all, thanks for watching. I think this will be uh, two videos because I don't know if uh, Laser wants to upload two videos of my um, of 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 my ramblings, but or a single long videos of my ramblings. But uh, yeah. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, you can check me out on my own channel. My name is Multimeteor, and this has been Magic 2013 Dream Puppets. Adios!